wickedness that's going on inside this world, and I'm sure that you understand this. And so, therefore, we need to bring forth uh, understanding today about what God's word is saying. Amen. Uh, we're living inside of a generation that people don't want to hear the word of God. What they want to do is more or less deal with philosophy. So with that being said, we need to have a understanding or rather we need to have God's understanding so that we can continue. Uh, and that's exactly what we come to talk about. We come to stop. We come to talk about don't stop. Continue. Uh, there is a lot of deception inside the world and with all of this deception that's taking place we need to continue in what's already been given but the problem is is that if you don't know what to continue in you can be completely misled amen, amen. so this is why we need to not stop but simply continue somebody say continue continue the meaning of the word continue is to uh present uh, uh, pre, uh, preset. What? Explain. Let's say this word, brother. Uh, to persist. To persist in a what? In an activity or process, or to resume after interruption. Interruption. Read that again for me, if you would. The meaning of continue is to persist. In an activity or process or to resume after interruption. After interruption. So there can be a lot of interruption that can take place inside your faith. Huh. So if your faith begins to be interrupted, that means that you need to continue. But the problem is, is that people don't know how to continue. So that's why we come to bring forth understanding about how to do such a thing. Somebody say continue. I remember when I was playing basketball, I remember when I was playing football coming up as a young man and when sports would get hard or my coach would get hard and, you know, he'll, you know, start saying things to me that I didn't regularly identify with. Maybe I didn't want to agree with it. I still had to continue when this thing was going on. Same thing with life today. Well, what's going on today is that people, they're fighting all of these battles, but they're not willing to continue in the situation. Somebody say continue. continue. People today, what's going on is you got people that's chopping their heads off. They're killing each other. That's why we got all this stuff that's going on today, because people don't want to continue in life. They don't want to find out what, what the means is and what life is actually about. See, our life is consistent about what God wants us to do. That's why the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody say continue. continue. See, when we're not continuing God's faith and we're not continuing in what God wants us to do, we can be stagnant in everything that's going on. So last night, I just use this as we will talk about continue. Last night I was put in a, I say, situation where my faith was a little interrupted. Hmm. My faith had been a little interrupted, but I had to continue while this thing was being interrupted. Somebody say continue. continue. See, as my faith was being interrupted, the reason why I had to continue is because I had to endure. So we're going to find out that continuing is all through the scripture. Matter of fact, it promised you that you would go through persecution. But the problem is, is that why believers, the reason why believers today don't have a continuing type of attitude is because, first of all, they've not been taught to endure, which means to continue. Somebody say continue. Continue. So last night I'm sitting there, people, they sitting there talking to me and they running their mouth about the scriptures and they talking about a whole bunch of stuff. But as we was talking, nothing was being solved. No equation was being solved. So as no equation was being solved, I started to get a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I understood that the scripture had to come forth so that I can continue in that conversation with everything, whatever we was talking about. Mm -hmm. Khan. Khan. Khan means yes or amen in Hebrew. So if we're going to continue... Just like, you know, people want to continue on their jobs, right? People get laid off. 
And then some people are able to continue. It's because they're keeping a steady, uh, a steady flow with how they're coming to work. They're keeping their activity with their job. So therefore, they're able to continue. You see what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. So yesterday, I'm sitting there. I'm talking last night. My wife, she was like, hey, you know, I really don't feel comfortable with you going. But I was like, babe, I really feel like I must go. Why it's, you know, this late at night. I even came by you and told you what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there and these people, they start talking about the word of God. As you hear what I'm saying, they start talking about the word of God. The scripture was never open, nor did we have a topic about why we was talking. Mm. So at, so if we sitting there talking, it seems like we got a bunch of misfire going on. So we got a whole bunch of misfire going on. Something is bound to happen because some type of confusion can happen. Right? Because there's not a topic involved when speaking. This is why God says that you must be a person that prepares what you say before you speak it. Huh. That's why we come to talk about don't stop, continue. We're talking about continue today. And at the end of this lesson, we can have whomever, if you're a person that's out there and you're not continuing in your faith and you've come across something that's interrupted your faith, then you need to persevere through this thing and you need to continue. Everybody shout in the house of God, continue. Continue. If we're not continuing in God, what will happen is, is we'll become stagnant and we'll become like all these other people that's in not inside these churches where they become stagnant in their faith and they never grow any further. God. Mm. So let's continue today and let's get some understanding. Before I get inside the word of God, as I do, we always pray over it and then we get understanding. Brother Stephen, as you always do, if you'll go ahead and pray for us and then I'll pray after. Go ahead, my brother. Let us bow our heads. Uh, let's recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thy is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father God, as I go inside your word today, Father, to guide your people, I ask that you govern my mouth to speak exactly what you want me to speak. Father, let my words be your words. Let my words not be nothing else other than your words. Father, your word in Proverbs chapter 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean out unto thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, so he may direct my path. So, Father, I'm asking that you direct my path while I'm inside your word, while I'm guiding your people. Father, I'm asking that you interrupt this service. I'm asking that you bring forth understanding and restoration to everybody soul that hear this particular message today because father there's a lot of pharisees a lot of people that seem as if they're teachers but father there's a lot of foxes amongst your people so father i'm asking that you re remove these wolves and father that you bring forth shepherds that's going to bring forth clear understanding to your people so that your people can live a righteous life it's in yeshua's name i pray i give you honor glory because you're worthy of praise let the house of god say amen, amen somebody say continue Continue. Inside the book of John chapter 19. St. John chapter 19 starting at verse 1. What better way to talk about continuing and use the master of continuing? Who's the master? Jesus the Christ. Why not use the perfect man that continued and persevered through the fact that he was going to die? Mm -hmm. uh, knew that he was going to die. Matter of fact, got the plan from the Father from the very foundations of the world that he was going to die for humanity. He could have stopped and interrupted that at any moment. But what he did was he continued. Somebody say continue. continue. See, when we're not continuing, oh man, it's a lot of things that can happen when you don't quit, when you mess around and quit. Huh? Yeah. And God ain't raised no softy. He ain't raised no quitter. He raised a winner. So let's go ahead and continue. John chapter 19, starting at verse 1. What's the book say, my brother? Read on. Everybody got it? The book of St. John, chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse 1. Amila, go inside of the room. Goodbye. Now, John chapter 19, starting at verse 1. St. John chapter 19, starting at verse 1. You got it, my brother? You about there? Let's read it. What the book say? Come on with it. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and then put on him a purple robe. Talking about the time when he's getting ready to be being led up to his crucifixion. This is what this is talking about. 
How many times that we need to be crucified in our flesh? The problem is, is that we don't allow, we don't continue so that that can take place. See, we don't allow our flesh to be buffeted. But go ahead, read on. Verse 3, it Come on. said, Hail, king of the Jews. Hail, king of the who? Jews. Read. And they smote him with their hands. Come on with it. Pilate therefore went forth again and said uh, unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you. That ye may know that I find no fault in him. Come on with it. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Ooh. And Pilate said unto them. That's some stuff right there. Here come Jesus. Now he's still wearing these crowns of thorns. So that means he was doing what? He was continuing with the process. Mm -hmm. See, he already knew that he was going to be crucified. So he had to let the Father's will be done. So our brothers, there's some people sitting there telling me about that Jesus is God and all this crazy stuff. Sitting there running their mouth about stuff, but yet there was a man that was died for me. His name was Jesus. Mm. Now I understand that this man, this son of God that we happen to confess inside the earth is the very son of the most high God. Well, the scripture make it very clear that the father had the son in the beginning. And inside of the son is the father. So the only way that we can see the father clearly is if we look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. The only way that we can see him because we can't hold his glory as if we look at Jesus. So when people begin to talk and preach and teach about how they saw God, well, my next question is, is who was you looking at? Mm. See, because there's an image that God put inside this earth for us to look at, to see him clearly. And his name is who? Jesus. Jesus. Chapter and verse, where we at? John chapter 19, verse <coughs> six. Read it. what did he say? Uh, when the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him. They Crucify said him. what? Crucify him. Man, it's already bad enough when we get people talk about us. Man, you tell somebody you want a death stand right there. You tell you talk about you won't give up the you won't give up all the plans when your life at hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, your life at hand when everybody sitting there talking about I'm gonna knock your head off. I'm ready to knock you off right now. I kill you right now. I bet you give up all the plans. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that's out there like that right now. Be at gunpoint. As soon as you be at gunpoint, robbery take place inside the house. You know what happened? They start running their mouth. That's what started happening. Oh, I know who did it. I know who did it. That's what people do today. Huh? That's why you got to continue. You see? Come on, man. Chapter and verse. Where we at? John chapter 19, verse 6. Well, I love this man Jesus right here, boy, because he continued when people, when the odds was against him. I mean, it was stacked against him real high. Chapter and verse. Where we at? John 19, verse 6. What the book say? It says, Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him. For I find no fault in him. Read on. The Jews answered him, We have a law. And by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Because he made himself the what? Son of God. Did he make himself the son of God or did <coughs> God make him the son of God? God? You see this? You see how all this confusion taking place? This is why you got to continue. That's why you got to speak according to the scripture. See, it was revealed to Peter that, see, it was revealed to Peter that he was the blessed son of God. It was not revealed to Peter that he was God. Mm-hmm. So I can't understand how people coming up with all these revelations and what they done fabricated and saw when that's never in the scripture. I ain't never read it. I don't read that. Uh, uh, I've read very clearly that the scripture says very clearly that God was manifest in the flesh. I've read that. But when you do the strong concordance and bring understanding about what that means, that means that God was shown in the flesh. Mean that God was revealed to us. God was to be declared to us or uh, 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 to be shown a, a, a different type of way to us because we could not hold God. We can't just fathom him. We can't see him with our own two eyes. So he had to be revealed some type of way or shown to us. So the only way that he can show us him is if he allowed someone to represent him. That's why he sent his son. That's why he's the image of God. Chapter and verse, where we at? John chapter 19, verse 8. Read on, what he say? When Pilate therefore heard that saying, Come on. he was the more afraid, mm. and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus did what? Gave him no answer. That brother, that's a soldier, huh? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to just go ahead and ride this baby out. I'm going to get the will. I'm going to do the will of my father. How many times people come and talk against you? Are you willing to sit there and stand for your faith? Is the question. 
How will you continue even when everything is stacked against you when nobody in the room like you? Matter of fact, people ready to kill you right now. I know it's people out there right now. It's people who probably got money situations. Huh? You got money situations out there and people don't, you know, really don't want you to succeed inside your life. Maybe you owe somebody about a thousand, two thousand dollars and they ready to take your life. Guess what? Continue anyway. Because God's got your back. Isaiah 54, 17 says that there's no weapon formed against you that shall what? Prosper. Any tongue that rise against you, you are allowed to condemn it. Why? Because you're under the shadow or the hedge of the Father. God. Uh -huh. Chapter and verse. Where we at? Uh, John chapter 19, verse 9. Somebody shout out, continue. 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 Come on, man. Read on. What this book say? Uh, <coughs> sorry, verse 10. It says, Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to cru crucify thee and have power to release thee? Read on. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me. Come on. You see that? Yeah. He ain't got no power against me, man, because I can call down the angels right now and they'll come and help me. Oh. That's some power right there. See, when you're a person that's able to endure or to rather continue... In the situation, it actually shows the power. Mm -hmm. So you can be in the middle of a whole bunch of wickedness and everything that's going on around you. And then yet you still continue. Guess what? You a straight soldier. God. Uh. So I got to continue. Somebody say continue. Continue. Come on, I'm going to keep on continuing even when people in the odds stacked against me. Nobody don't like me and nobody trying to hang around me. I'm still going to continue. Read on, man. What this book say? Verse 11. This will be a spiritual uplifting one right here. This should help you out. I needed this too. Read this book say. What the book say, brother? Jesus answered, Come on. Thou couldest have no power at all against me, mm. except it were given thee from above. That's how I feel. Because I'm a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. So by me having a, being a follower of Christ, I know that ain't no weapon formed against me going to prosper. Because guess what? I know I got the right to condemn it. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, Jesus was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He knew that he had dominion over that death because he knew he was going to get the keys. God. Because that's who got the keys right now. Huh? He knew he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. So why be afraid of a shadow? Huh? When he's the one that has the power over the death. He's the one that got the power over the death. So why be afraid of the shadow of it? Mm -hmm. I made the shadow. God. Uh. I'm the creator of it. People today don't even understand that they're the ones that create evil because of their wicked deeds. Chapter and verse. Where we at? John. But yet you're still afraid. Mm -hmm. How are you afraid of the wicked deed that you created? Ain't you made in the image of God? So if you made in the image of God, guess what? When you speak evil, guess what? It's going to manifest. Mm. So how could you be afraid of your own setup that's already performed before you? That's God speaking. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Chapter and verse, man. Where we at? John chapter 19, uh, bottom of 11. Come on with it. It says, therefore, he that delivered me unto thee Come on. hath the greater sin. Read it. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. And some people will sit there and say, Well, how you sit there and say that you performing and there's, the, and there's things that set up before you? Because first of all, there's power, life, and death in the what? Tongue. Power, life, and death. It is life and death is in the tongue. So if I speak nothing but life, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to speak and nothing but life going to happen. But as soon as I speak something that's got something to do with death, guess what? Death arises. God. Uh, chapter and verse. Where we at? John, John chapter 19 verse 13. What the book say? When Pilate therefore heard that saying, yeah. he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Go ahead with it. And it was the preparation of the Passover. Yeah. And about the sixth hour, and uh, he said unto the Jews, Behold, your king. He, he said what? Behold, your king. See, this is why people don't understand why Jesus <coughs> had to die. Passover was at hand. See, Jesus had to die so that we can be passed over this death anyway. Mm -hmm. so, we get to, so that we can enter into the presence of God. So he had to come. He had to be the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, because we could do nothing to please God. So God had to prepare a way, or rather a will, so that we would be able to come back or be redeemed. Mm. Huh? The umbilical cord needed to be reattached. 
But how can it be reattached when you constantly doing whatever the hell you want to do? Mm -hmm. God. Uh. That's the problem. Somebody say, continue. Continue. What the book say, my brother? John chapter 19, verse 14. Come on with it. Or verse 15, sorry. Verse 15, it says, but they cried out. Away with him. Away with him. They said Crucify what? Crucify him. <laughs> they, they cried out and said what? Away with him. Crucify him. Uh-huh. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Man, we ain't got no king, we ain't got no king but no but a man. But I find it quite funny that these people sitting here trying to talk about crucify Jesus. Think about how look at Jesus, look at his action. <laughs> Look at how he was sitting there, kept his mouth quiet. He was silent the whole entire time. Are you willing to be silent when people talk about you? When they talk about you behind your back. You be ready to fight. You ready to knock them out. I'll punch you in the face for talking about me. That's how people do. Right? Mm -hmm. But instead of them saying, you know what? I might have messed up. But guess what? I'm going to go ahead and persevere and continue. they would rather do is they'll get stagnant at what somebody said. Oh, that person said this about you. Now you get stagnant and now you don't even know what to do. Now you all bobbled in the head as opposed to continuing. How do you get a person to stop? How do you allow someone to interrupt your faith? Think about that. This is what happens on the daily. Jesus' faith wasn't being interrupted. He kept going. <coughs> person sitting here talking crazy about him, he still kept going. God. Uh, Whether they agreed or disagreed, this man telling him, these, this man came on the scene telling these people that he's the son of God. Matter of fact, the scriptures, I'm fulfilling all the scriptures. And they ain't agreed to nothing he was talking about. They weren't even trying to hear that. So since they was not trying to hear that, he still continued in what the father told him to do. Whether they wanted to hear it or whether they wanted to forbear it, he continued. That's called courage. Matter of fact, that's called boldness. You can learn something from the Messiah, the great one. Chapter and verse, where we at? John chapter 19, verse 16. Come on with it. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Mm. They took Jesus and did what? <coughs> led him away. Ooh, if a prisoner, or if a, if a cop come and grab people today, police officer be out there, you break the law, guess what's going to happen? As soon as they grab you, you be ready to cry, I don't want to go to jail. Cause I, be, be, I don't want to go to jail. Person commit murder, I don't want to do it. But can you continue with your life when you committed that crime? You made the decision. Now can you continue and live out the circumstance behind that? Can you continue? Can you continue and say, you know what? I messed up, but guess what? I still have a life to live inside of what I'm dealing with. God. Uh, Can you continue? Somebody say continue. Continue. What the book say? Chapter and verse. John chapter 19 verse 17. Go ahead. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of skull, of a skull. Come on. Which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Go ahead with it. Where they crucified him and two others. Where they crucified him and did what? With and, two others. Right? Mm -hmm. Read on. On either side. Uh, on either side one and Jesus is the middest go ahead and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews come on this title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city and it was written in Hebrew and Greek mm. and Latin then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate write not the king of the Jews but that he said I am king of the Jews <laughs> Go ahead and read it. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Go ahead and with it. the soldiers, when they have crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now, people today, they don't even understand what that means when they're saying that the soldiers crucified Jesus. Because you need to understand and get a real grasp of what was taking place. Back in the Roman culture and what was taking place, what they would do is they'll put you up on a cross. And when they put you up on the cross, they would nail you to the cross. So therefore, they would actually do is they'll scratch out your uh, your joints, pull your joints out of place from one end onto the other and then nail your hands shut. And so therefore, now you're dangling. And then when it was time for you to die, you suffocated because you always tried to pull yourself up to try to get air. This is how Jesus died. He died on the cross by suffocation. Hmm. Huh? This is the death of the cross. 
So when we talking about what Christ, what the Messiah, the man Jesus Christ went through, these are the things that he had to endure. This is what he had to continue in. He had to continue in pain while people were stretching out his joints and pulling that all out of the socket. And that was not something that was originally found that way. Huh? It was not of his nature to go through that excruciating pain. Huh? Just like God does not want us to go through pain. But the problem is, is that we are the one that created this pain. And people are always trying to blame God like God, the re like he the reason. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to continue. Somebody say continue. Continue. Always trying to sit here and try to blame God for your <laughs> sin. It's your sin, child. Fix it. Get it together. Chapter and verse. Where we at? John chapter 19, <clears throat> verse 24. Go ahead, read it. They, uh, they said, therefore, among themselves... Let not us rent it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. Now you know when they say fulfilled, the scripture had to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if the scripture had to be fulfilled, that means that he had to continue. <coughs> because if he wouldn't have continued, then God's plan or God's word would have been now have returned to him void mm -hmm. and God's word can never return to him void he has to go out and set out exactly what it is to accomplish God uh -huh. it has to go out and accomplish and do exactly what he said God uh -huh. that's why St. John 7 and 38 say he that believeth on me as the scripture have said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water God uh -huh. must believe on him as the word said if we don't believe on him as the word, guess what? The word not on the inside of us. God. Uh, chapter and verse, my brother, what's the location? John chapter 19, uh, verse 25. Please prove out what I'm saying. I want you to read it with me. What the book say? Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. Uh -huh. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Uh -huh. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Uh -huh. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Go ahead. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Uh -huh. After this, Jesus what? Knowing that all things were now so that, accomplished. Now these things have now taken place. Now I got the victory. Huh? He persevered. Mm -hmm. Got the victory over everything that's going on. How many times that people, they see the victory ahead. And when they got the victory ahead, they quit right there at the last second. Mm -hmm. Being in the middle of a football game, kids out there, y'all out there that play football. Basketball players, you in the middle of a game and it's the tie score. 99-99 and all you got to do is score uh, 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 all you got to do is score a, a basket with five seconds left on the clock and you <coughs> quit and you got it in your hands to win all you got to do is concentrate on the plan and do and, and just walk this thing out you got the victory in your hand same thing with life today people got the victory in their hand and they don't even know what they're supposed to be following know that they know what they're supposed to be doing it's the same thing man same exact thing. We got the victory <coughs> over the devil. People are always talking about all oh, the devil. People give the devil too much credit. Mm. Not understanding that the devil's a created <coughs> being. Come. Uh. Gain the victory over this sucker. Get this flesh under control. Chapter and verse. Where we at? Uh, John chapter 19. <coughs> what was that? Uh, verse 28. 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Go ahead, not verse 29. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon uh, his sip and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, verse 30 is big. Go ahead. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He said it is what? It is finished. Oh, man. Here it is. Jesus <coughs> done finished out his what? His course. Mm -hmm. He continued. Can you continue and persevere when people hate you? 
What about when somebody talk about your mama? Your auntie? Cousin? Sister? Any of that is better than being mama. Any. <laughs> being crucified. All these things, as you just said, my brother, is better than being what? Crucified. Can you continue? Can you continue with all the weight that's on the world when you got all this depression that you feel that's messing with your head that's bothering you? Can you continue? Can you continue even when you don't feel like getting up to go to work tomorrow? Can you continue? Can you? Because if you can't continue, then there's no reason for you to be living. That's a reason to live because now that you have something to continue for, that means that you have something to look forward to. Can you continue? Somebody say continue. Continue. Continue to race. Stop allowing obstacles and people to come inside your life to stop your faith. That's the problem with people today. They don't have a continue type of attitude. If you can have an attitude of endure, and when people talk to you, you already know how to talk to these people when they're dealing with you, and you already been in a certain situation of continuing in something, when people come to talk to you, guess what? You will already know what to do because you will have all the keys to victory. Somebody say continue. Continue. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 24. It's a good one, huh? Uh. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24 Starting at that verse 9 Continue is all over the word Means to endure So all those that was here That came in a little late You understand what the word What a meaning continue means The meaning of continue is To present uh, what Present right Persist Yeah okay The meaning of continue is to persist in an activity or process or to resume <coughs> after interruption. It means to endure or maintain. So when we're dealing with maintaining, think about maintaining a particular course. Sometimes you might get off the course, but that don't mean stay right there. Maintain, get back up and keep moving. Maintain that sucker. It may be bumpy, but guess what? Maintain it. Somebody say continue. Continue. Even when it get hard, continue. Even when it don't make you feel good, continue. Come. Uh. Even when your eyes, your eyes hurting, whatever it is, continue. Your stomach hurt, continue. It's life. It's gonna happen. Things happen in life. Continue. No reason to sit there and wimp out. Continue. This is why people that have these uh, diseases and all of these different things that go on and they die off early is because they're not willing to continue. Somebody say continue. Continue. Matthew chapter 24 verse 9. What the book say? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. For whose name's sake? For Jesus' name's sake, you're going to be hated for him. Go ahead, read on. And then shall many be offended, uh -huh. and shall betray one another, uh -huh. and shall hate one another. Keep it coming. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So it's going to be a lot of deception and all these type of things. You're going to see hatred, racism, all this stuff going to be going on. Read on. And because iniquity And you're going to see a whole bunch of sin going on Read on Shall abound Go ahead The love of many shall wax cold there Ain't going to be a whole bunch of love out here Because love is a learned obedience While And it teaches you to have the victory over your enemy That's what love is Read on Verse 13 But he that shall endure unto the end He that shall do what? Continue He that continues unto the what? End. So that means that you got to do some type of striving. Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. So sometimes it's going to have, you're going to have somebody that's going to try to put a stop to your faith. Oh, you know, you ain't supposed to be believing it like that. You're supposed to be believing it like this. You're supposed to say, oh, hold up, wait a minute now. That ain't what the words say. Matter of fact, let's get in the word and let's find out clearly what the word says. God. Somebody shout out continue. Continue. 
You got to continue this thing. But how can you continue when you don't know what to continue in? Let's read it, my brother. Verse 13, it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, uh -huh. the same shall be saved. The same shall be what? Saved. So the person that constantly continues all the way into the end, that person shall be what? Saved. Oh, okay. That made plenty of sense. That make plenty of sense. Right. Watch this. People be wanting their paycheck Friday. I bet they go to work five days a week. Mm. They continue for that. They can't continue for the kingdom of God. You work hard for your paycheck. Work hard. Sweat blood and tears. But now, you can't continue for your life? <laughs> you, you can't continue for your life? You can't endure and, and, and persevere when it's hard for your life. Somebody say continue. Continue. Continue when it's hard. When your lights go off. I remember when my lights was off. I remember when I ain't had no food. I still had to continue. Had to have faith and say God still is going to provide for me anyway. And he did. God. Uh, Somebody say continue. 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 Chapter and verse. Where we at? Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Come on with it. And this gospel. What type of gospel? The one that's going to teach you about you having endurance. You continuing. And this gospel. So what? Of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. This ain't being preached in all the world that you're going to be persecuted, hated, and all this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. huh? And you have to endure in all of these trials and tribulations. When well, they got some type of, they got some rapture type of doctrine that you're just going to get raptured out of the sky supernaturally. And, and you ain't going to endure nothing. You ain't have to continue in no type of problems that's going to take place. Mm -hmm. And he clearly telling you that you need to endure. Going to Rome. Clarissa, go close the door, please. Here it is, right here. God. Uh. Nobody trying to hear that. Oh, man, you going to tell me that I got to continue through problems? You mean to tell me people going to hate me because I'm preaching Jesus the correct way as opposed to preaching it falsely? <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. And you got to be willing to endure and stand fast in teaching. God. Uh. Let's deal with it. Chapter and verse, where we at? Matthew 24, verse 14. And that's another reason why I know certain people can't deal with me when I start talking about these scriptures. Because when we get into the scriptures, I'm bringing forth understanding about what the words say, not what I think. Mm -hmm. The words say one thing, that's what it say, that's what we're going to stick with. That's the logic, that's what he say, that's cool with me. God. Uh. Have he said that the Father is on the inside of me and I is I, and I in the Father? That means that's that's real clear to me. That's like having, that's like having a cup of water, a, a, a cup. You put that cup there, then you put something inside of it. Guess what? That means I'm inside of it now. And when you reverse it, it's the same thing upside down. If I'm inside the Father, then, then the Father's in, on the inside of me. I'm in the Father and the Father in me. That's what it means. That's real clear. It don't get no simpler than that. God. Uh. I don't understand how people miss this. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 inside the Old Testament. The scripture that the pastors don't want you to continue in. <laughs> they tell you the Old Testament done away with it. Oh, Jesus, he came and did away with the law. And I'll be like, huh? Romans chapter 3 and verse 31 say that we make void the law through faith. Say, God forbid, yea, we established. Which means we continue it. See? We endure. But, I had somebody try to judge me about the Sabbath day. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you keep the Sabbath day? I'm sitting there like, huh? Do I keep the Sabbath? Yeah, I preach on Sabbath day. Matter of fact, yeah, I keep it. Oh, do you? Do you do like you trying to find certain things about what I'm doing when I'm keeping the Sabbath? Do you cook on the Sabbath? Well, back then, whenever I didn't know anything about it, yeah, I cooked. But now that I understand <laughs> how to get around those things, no, nah, I, don't, I don't spark no fire. Matter of fact, I just use the microwave. I use common sense. Right? Mm -hmm. See, it, it, it's ways around it. You just got to do what you got to do. Stuff like that. Oh, you working on the side if you go. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm doing. I'm out there like trying to build for God. I'm trying to like build a church. So therefore, I ain't never got to work on the side too. I can just be up on the side just worshiping God and worshiping God only. That's it. I got plans for. God got plans for what I'm doing. God. Uh, what, what is wrong with these people today? Well, let's deal with it, man. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9, starting at that verse 11, my brother. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. People always talk, oh, you, oh, you, you, you doing this, you doing that. Boy, you steady trying to find fault in somebody else, boy. Gotta take that beam out your own eye. How you sitting there trying to trying to take the speck out of my eyes? <laughs> oh, look at that little thing that's right there, boy. You got this mess up right here. Well, you was tripping, man. <laughs> I'm trying to follow Christ to the best of my ability. Trying to do everything I could possibly do to try to be a righteous individual. No, I can't do it. It's him that's doing it in me. Let's deal with it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Everybody got it, Con? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, picking it up at verse 11. What the book say, my brother? I returned and saw under the sun. No, I, saw under, I saw under the what? Under the sun. Which means on the earth. Read on. That the race is not to... It's not to the swift. Oh, the race. This thing is a race. You got to run this thing out. It's not to the who? Swift. People be trying to be conniving and try to be slick. That's why they be trying to point out certain things about other people. Mm. Uh -huh. See? To the who? Swift. Trying to be slick. Now read on. Nor the battle to the strong. Oh, this battle ain't for the who? Strong. Oh, you can be sitting there and be all bold all you want. It ain't about how strong you is. Go ahead. Read on, though. Neither or neither yet. Bread to the wise. You ever been to a ever been to a gym? How many people have been to a gym? Huh? Everybody. Everybody been to a gym, right? You see how you get in there, you got them guys that will lift all them weights. Mm -hmm. They be real, real strong, right? And then you sit there, <laughs> you endure for a long period of time when you able to lift weights for a long period of time. Like you have a uh, uh you have an endurance type of workout. Mm -hmm. Like that's the type of workout we work out when I work out. Mm -hmm. Endurance. Not about the strength. I work out for in what? Endurance. For a long period of time. That's how I work out. Why is it that people can't work out their faith like that? Mm. Endure. Continue. See? Oh, I got to get strong. I got to get big for the ladies. That's how people be thinking. <laughs> I got to get big for the ladies. I got to look all big and strong. How about you put some endurance behind that? Person knock you out. One punch. Be gone. <laughs> Chopping verse. What we have, man? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. What do he say that? It says, nor yet riches to man of understanding. So it ain't about your money neither. Go ahead and read on now. <coughs> nor yet favor to man of skill. Come on. But time and chance happeneth to them all. Come on, man. Time and what? Chance. So this thing is literally about you having patience. Mm -hmm. Endurance. Dealing with the trials and tribulations that's going to come ahead. And then when it come, I got to say, okay. <laughs> I got to be able to get through this thing and keep moving. God. Uh, chapter and verse. Where we at? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 12. Go ahead and read it. For man also knoweth not his time. Mm. As the fishes that are taken in an, in an evil net. Go ahead. And as the birds that are caught uh, in the snare. So are the sons of man. Snared in an evil time. Go ahead. When it falleth suddenly upon Keep them. Keep coming. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun. This wisdom I, have I, I seen I under the sun. This is good right here. Watch this. Go ahead. And it seemed great unto me. You know why it was great unto me to understand that this type of understanding, the fact that you got to endure is great. Why? Read it. There was a little city and few men within it. Go ahead. And there came a great king uh -huh. against it and besieged it and built great Bulwarks against it. Come on. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Because there was people that was wise that understand that you got to endure. There's people out here that happen to have this type of understanding that you ain't just going to make the kingdom off of you just sitting there being hypothetical about how smart you is. No, it's about endurance. Go ahead. Read on, though. Now there was found in, a, in it a poor wise man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. You hear this? By his wisdom, he did what? Delivered the city. So if this wise man is trying to deliver the city, huh? If this wise man is delivering the city, this is what we need to be paying attention to. We need to be paying attention to press. Uh, what was it? Perseverance. Per per perseverance. Constantly going. This is what we need to be paying attention to. Wise individual. So if we ain't got no wise people to tell us about enduring all the way to the end. Why is it that people today? They always trying to find fault in someone else. Because they stop persevering. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Somebody say continue. Continue. Let's deal with it. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
2 Timothy chapter 3. I know this right here. This type of this type of understanding when reading the word, it's too high for baby. Like too high for babies. Mm -hmm. uh, you can give something to a baby, and you can give a piece of meat to a baby to choke mm -hmm. and die. Therefore, it gotta be broken down to its lowest form. That's why we give babies milk. Right? Formula. Right? So if you're giving a baby formula, that's how we should be giving people the, the word today. Inside of a formula. <laughs> Give them a formula or a form of how they can understand it. See? Mm -hmm. Ain't no formula going around today. There's no proper teaching. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. What the book say, my brother? Everybody say continue. Continue. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. <laughs> what he say? 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 12. Again, that's 2 Timothy inside the New Testament. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 12. Continue is the message. Don't stop, continue. What the book said. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. He say, hey man, let's understand. You're going to suffer persecution when, you suffer, when you're following Christ and you're trying to live a righteous life. You're going to be persecuted by your faith. Just get it in your system. It's going to take place. You persecuted by everything else, so why not be persecuted for something that's great? He's greater than you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is inside the world. You might as well be a person that's going to be persecuted for it. But endure it. Continue. Come. Uh, Read it. What he say? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Mm. But continue. What he say? Continue. What he say? But continue. Oh, I like that word. Ah, oh, that's like a breath of fresh air. He said continue. Understand. Don't stop. Keep going. Don't quit. Right? Continue in what? He said, but continue you in the things which you have learned. Whoa. Listen to that. Continue in the things that you have did what? Learned. Learned. Now here it is that a lot of people seem to be learned. The problem is, is that when they want to continue in what they have learned, and then one comes and says, is that right that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what you're talking about. Let's get some understanding out of the scripture. Not you run your mouth. They get all bent out of shape. Like you said something that's crazy. Can't prove it. You can't prove what you got to say. First Thessalonians chapter five verse twenty one says what? Prove all things. Hold okay. fast that which is good. Why is it that you can't prove what you got to say? Well, it's because you're not enduring. You're not continuing the things that you have learned. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the things that I learned was that Jesus is the Son of God. That's inside the scripture. Matter of fact, tell me to confess that. I confess that openly. He's the Son. He's the Messiah. Matter of fact, Peter confessed that. He confessed that he was the son of God. That was the revelation that was given. So if someone come giving some other type of revelation, then I already know that's just to disannul that. That don't even make no sense. <laughs> God. God. That's why you got to continue on the things that you have what? Learned. Chapter and verse, where we at? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. And if you learn something, that means you learn something from a teacher. God. God. Someone that's teaching you something correctly, right? Huh. I mean, you can get some self-autonomy every once in a while. You get some self diligence, get some self understood type stuff every once in a while, uh, uh, every once in a while, right? Uh. But you do need someone to teach you, right? Uh. Oh, okay. He say continue the things that you have what learned. Go ahead. And has been assured of. Mm. You have it. been whoa, whoa, whoa. You have been what assured of it. <laughs> it's been proven to you. Uh. God. Mm -hmm. And if it's been proven to you, it's been proven to you how out of the scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say continue. Continue. Woo! I gotta continue the race. Can't keep on sitting here playing games. I need to continue inside the word of God. If I ain't trying to continue the word, that means I'm a liar. Bible say let God be true and let every man be a what? Liar. Continue in the word. If the word don't say it, I don't believe it. God. Oh, oh Jesus is God. <laughs> Jesus is God. Yeah, he's the very image of God. Sure enough is, has been given power by God. I know that. 
God. Uh. Know that the Father is inside of him while he was in this earth. I know that. I knew that he was inside the Father when he was up in the heavens. Knew that too. That made plenty of sense. Right? Uh. But, you know, you get people that sit there and look at you crazy. Like you sitting there, like you just talking from the top of your brain. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to continue in the things that you have learned. And you've been assured of them. That's what the scriptures say, right? Uh. Go ahead. What do you say now? Chapter and verse. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 Go ahead He says but continue you in the things which thou hast learned And hast been assured of Knowing of whom thou hast learned them And then when you know That's good right there mm -hmm. Cause when you continue in something You should be able to go and point back to who you learned it from mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I remember that that brother right there. God taught me through that individual right there. He taught me how to continue, how to persevere, how to endure. <laughs> God, God, hey, God taught me how to endure, but I can't endure up on my own thought process. I got a uh, thought process. I got to endure with His word. God, Amen. so you know who you learned it from. Sitting there talking, oh, ain't nobody taught me nothing. I can go back and point at all the things that I learned from all the individuals that I learned them from. <laughs> go on, man, let's read it, man. What the book say, man? I be having a good time with this word. <laughs> oh, you got to, man, because if you don't have a good time with the word, it's pointless for you to be dealing with it. Go on, chapter and verse, where we at? 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. Go ahead, what he say? And that from a child that has known the Holy Scripture. Mm. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation oh. through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So, <laughs> I'm supposed to be wise. I'm supposed to be one wise individual. That right there shook my wife for a second. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this right here, this continued, this endure message right here, this thing serious. Because when, it, when you talk about enduring, you got to know what you're enduring in. See, I know that I'm continuing the fact that I understand that he's Christ Jesus. Did that book just say that he was God Jesus or did it say Christ Jesus? Christ. It said Christ, Messiah. Right? Mm -hmm. So why we got all this other stuff going on? Oh, you know, it's three and one. It's called a Godhead. Speak for what it is. <laughs> Stop using different words that ain't in there. God. Uh. Let's read it, my brother. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse what? 16. What the book say? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So all the word of God, everything that we read is being given by the inspiration of who? God. Given by inspiration of who? God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and God was the word. word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So God had to speak it uh. into existence for it to take place. Oh, okay. Okay. If he had to be speaking, I could have sworn when inside the scripture it tells you that God said, let there be light. Let there be light. That means that was speaking, talking. That was talking involved. Right? Mm -hmm. Making sense. Go ahead now. Now, God can manifest his word through an individual, but yet his word still be spoken through somebody. So, therefore, if his word is being spoken through somebody, isn't that God speaking? Mm -hmm. But God ain't got to be there in person to be able to speak that. He can just speak it and speak it through someone and then it happens. Okay, I'm making sure I'm speaking correctly. He is God, so he can be on the scene at all different areas. Matter of fact, he's here today. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm speaking, you here, you there, God here. Right? Uh. Okay. That makes plenty of sense. <laughs> so when we say that Jesus is God, people got to understand what they're talking about. He trying to tell me that God was just in one place. That's what you're telling me. When you say that Jesus is God, you're telling me he's just in one place and one place only. You can't do that. He was the image. He was showing me who God was. Because God is way bigger than flesh. <laughs> you see? You see how ignorant? This is why people, this is why I don't like to have these type of discussions with people. Because you got to be able to think outside of that. Chapter and verse, where we at? 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. Come on, man. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, it's profitable for, for who? For doctrine. For what? For teaching. For reproof. For, for, to correct people. For correction. Oh, okay. For instruction uh -huh. in righteousness. Uh -huh. That 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 the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's good stuff right there. Yeah. That's why I need to continue right there. Come. Uh -huh. 
so I can be thoroughly furnished. Anybody want to be thoroughly furnished? Go ahead. I, 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 I love. Somebody ever say I? I, I want to be thoroughly furnished. Right? I want to know that. I want to know what God is talking about and be able to, you know, rightly divide the word of truth. God. Oh. Right? Let's deal with this thing. Let's give a. Uh, I mean, I, we can talk about this endurance. We, we're going to bring another understanding to it. We're going to give this last scripture right here. I thought we was going to go over and over. But we're going to bring this last scripture and we're going to bring this thing to a close. All right? Somebody say, continue. Continue. First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 4, picking it up at verse 13. The book of First Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 13. Again, that's First Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading it at verse 13. <coughs> if you don't continue in the faith that you happen to understand, which is the word of God, you are one lost individual. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Time. Amen. Make plenty of sense to me. Let's deal with it. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 13. What does the book say, my brother? It says, till I come, give attendance to reading. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Give attendance. Give your thought process. Give your mind. Give your life. Your presence. Huh? Your presence over to what? Reading. Oh, so you got to constantly continue to read, right? Uh, read. To exhortation. Uh-huh. To lifting people up. Go ahead. To doctrine. Which is different type of teaching. Go ahead. Neglect not the gift. That is in you. So watch this. If you do any neglecting of a gift, are you continuing? No. <clears throat> See, this is why I don't understand why people say, I, oh, you, you speak in tongues. Yeah, I speak in tongues. But if you heard what I just said, I'm the one doing the speaking. Because mm -hmm. I can't neglect the gift that's inside of me. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear that? Now, the Spirit is the one that's giving the utterance, meaning the understanding or the unction of speaking the word. But yet I'm doing the speaking because I'm the man that's talking. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. I, make that, I think that makes plenty of sense. Chapter and verse, where we at? First Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. I like that what that says. It says to do what? Neglect not the gift that is in you. Don't even neglect that. Don't neglect. How many different gifts God done gave people when they sitting there neglecting it? Mm -hmm. Now God gave me another gift other than just that. He gave me a gift to articulate words, what these things mean, meanings of words, so speech well. So I can't neglect that gift. Matter of fact, I need to be fashioning it better sometimes. Teach myself how to speak correctly sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Better than what I'm actually doing, right? Let's deal with it. Chapter and verse, where we at? 1 Timothy 4, verse 14. Go ahead. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given thee by prophecy. With the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Uh -huh. Meditate upon these things. If you're meditating upon these things, that's because you're thinking about them. So if you're thinking about them, that means you're thinking about rehearsing. Mm -hmm. Right? So that means you're trying to continue. Keep coming. Give thyself wholly to them. Pay close attention to what's being said right here. This is very, very big. You don't want to miss this. Chapter and verse. Where we at? First Timothy 4 verse 15. Go ahead. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. That your profiting may appear unto all. You know why? If you're not continuing in what you're doing, then guess what? People can't see that there's progress. That's why you must continue. Mm -hmm. See? Go ahead. Read on. Chapter and verse. 1 Timothy 4 verse 16. Watch this. Here it is. Take heed unto thyself. Take heed unto your what? Yourself. Go ahead. And unto the doctrine. Unto the doctrine, which is the teaching that you have. Take heed unto yourself. So if you're not taking heed unto yourself, studying to show thyself or prove, a workman not needing to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you're not doing that, take heed to yourself, then what? It says, take, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. What he said do? Continue in them. He said continue in them. That's why when somebody be talking about talking, I say, hey, Tevin, <laughs> do you believe that Jesus is God? I flip to the scripture and I say, can you find that for me? People get mad at me. Oh, that's a part of faith that you're trying to push off on somebody else for me to believe how you believe. I'm like, no, I ain't telling you believe how I believe. I'm telling you believe the scripture way. Mm -hmm. Scripture tell me to believe on the scripture. I need to read the scripture so I can't believe because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. 
Right? Mm -hmm. So if I can't hear the word, then I can't believe. Right? Right. Make plenty of sense. That's why I need the word every time I talk. That makes plenty of sense, right? Uh. Chapter and verse, where we at? First Timothy 4, 16. Read it on. It says, uh, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. Uh -huh. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself. Anybody want to help save thyself? Uh -huh. Hear this? Remember I said continue unto the end. <coughs> he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh -huh. You want to help save yourself? Here it is. You need to do what? Continue. Somebody say continue. 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 Read on. He said, uh, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear you. And then you will be able to help others that surround you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Man. That makes plenty of sense. Somebody say, don't stop, continue. Don't, don't stop, stop, continue. That's why we need to continue. Let's give God a hand clap for the word today. Don't stop, can't stop. Don't stop, continue. I hope that this message was a blessing to all those that's on Facebook and YouTube today. Don't stop, continue. You need to continue in the word. Because if you're not continuing the word, guess what? Your faith would be interrupted. You can be stopped. It's just like being interrupted on commercial. You don't want to deal with that. So you might as well get you a word, some word that's going to bless you that you can continue in as opposed to listening to people and all of their philosophy. Hope that this was a blessing to you. Hope that God blessed you through this word. And I hope that you can constantly continue uh, inside your journey with uh, Jesus the Christ. Um, if there's anybody out here that would like to say anything that's here, uh, uh, that's on the internet, this would be the time to say anything that you like to say, uh, and that way I can kind of just read your message and uh, and I, you know, I just kind of just give you a, uh, you know, a hello or shalom. Uh, now, uh, now that that is over with, but you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and start saying your messages uh, here on uh, Facebook. All those that's on uh, Facebook, I need you to understand that October the 18th will be the day that Lost Souls Ministry is opening their church. The doors will be opening October the 18th. Uh, that is 809 Broadway. 809 Broadway, Lost Souls Ministry is on the street of 809 Broadway. We will be opening the doors at Lost Souls Ministry, 809, Broad, uh, 809 Broadway, which is on a Wednesday. The October 18th, 809 Broadway, Lost Souls Ministry will be opening the doors. Come and visit us. 6.30 p.m. is the start time that we will be opening the doors because we already have the keys to that thing. That thing's being furnished we're decking it out so it can be a home type of feel but it's still gonna have the church look we're gonna praise we're gonna worship uh we're gonna praise worship that saturday that comes up and man god's gonna move so i hope that god's been blessing you through this ministry i hope that he constantly blessing uh constantly blessing you like this video share this video and uh lead somebody to christ shalom shalom